All right, so um, pardon the usage of my old Photoshop. It is um, directly transferable to the newest Photoshop, um, newest Adobe Creative Cloud, so just keep that in mind. I just have to update something before I can use that one again. Um, what you're going to do today is this is kind of in addition to our previous lessons as we're starting to learn how to edit and cut out our items for our water droplet picture. There's a couple of tools that might be very helpful. First of all, make a copy of your layer. Always make those copies because if you go too far, you can at least go ahead and delete this one and recopy that original layer so you don't have to worry about it. Next, we're going to be moving about halfway down your toolbar on the left-hand side. You're going to see a few options here, and these are other options which might also be very helpful when we're doing our, um, when we're doing our underwater work. First is the blur tool. When you go to that blur tool, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and zoom in. And you're going to see, sorry, I zoomed in a lot. You can see the pixels on there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give myself a larger brush. Oh, there we go. A larger brush. That's a great tip. If you're making your brush bigger and smaller and you only see this, you can't tell how big your brush is. This happens quite a bit and it happens um, because you have your caps lock on. So if you only ever get those little tiny crosshairs, see and make sure your caps lock is turned off and there's the size of your cursor. Once again, your right bracket on your keyboard makes it bigger, left bracket makes it smaller. Your brackets are like the square looking parentheses above your enter key. Okay, Use that. That is number one keyboard shortcut for working in Photoshop, working you know, in general in, in um, the suite. So if I go ahead, I'm going to look. I've got my brush on a soft brush, a 0% hardness. If it's all the way up, your effect gets a little bit more harsh on the edges. This will give it like a soft airbrushy edge. Then I have my strength. It can be very subtle down at 10%. It can be kind of medium or it can be really dramatic. And I'm going to show you really dramatic just so you see the difference. So in the blur tool, if I click and drag, you're going to see that it's getting more blurry. I can continue to click and wiggle this over the top, and he looks like we've given him a blurry eye. It's really, um, really blending in there. I went back in history, undid all that. So that's the blur tool at 100%. If I make it more subtle, this could be a case where I want to just gently blur out a bag underneath the eye, something that's very subtle. This could be a great thing where you go, let's say it's under the water, and you want to just very gently blur out the edge of a pant leg or the edge of a foot so that it's not too um, defined. Under the water, it's probably going to be have a, it's probably going to have a little bit of blurriness. Okay, so the other tool over here is called the smudge tool. Smudge tool. If I put that strength up all the way, I'm going to go ahead and recopy this layer. So you can see I hid this eyeball. That means that that layer is turned off, and I'm on this layer because it's in blue. It's activated. If I grab that smudge tool, same thing goes. I have it on a soft brush. The hardness level is down. I can grab that eyeball, make my cursor a little bigger. I could actually smudge that eyeball down. Now that's pretty dramatic. He looks kind of weird there. But what I could also do is just lightly nudge something if I notice maybe the face has a weird tilt to it. Or notice though, if I just do single clicks and bring it down a little bit at a time, it's a little more effective than one click and dragging it. You get a lot of those stripes coming from that. Okay, so that is the smudge tool. And that's going to be something that's a little bit more um, helpful if you look over here at the collar. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the strength. I want it to be a soft smudge. And I can just slightly pull things here and there. Maybe those are going with the ripples in the water. I know it's kind of a weird picture to be doing the demo on. It just happens to be what I had open. Okay, so that smudge tool might allow you to move things to go with the ripples that you see in your water. So again, utilizing all of those tools, and a reminder, too, that that item you place in your water droplet picture should have a similar color profile as your original picture. So if it's black and white, your item should be black and white. If it's full color, your item should be full color, etc. 
Please do some excellent work. Ask me questions as you guys have them come up. Come up. Um, and then, sorry about that, then we'll go from there.